Good morning. And it is a good morning. First of all, I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for being here to celebrate the granting of this federal charter to the National American Indian Veterans. As many of you know, there has been a long-standing effort to get this done for our tribal veterans. So it is great to be with so many people who have helped to get this over the finish line. We have folks who have traveled here from all over the country, and I know we have many from South Dakota, Oklahoma, and Montana. To kick things off, the Coalition of Large Tribes Chairman, Marvin Weatherax, will lead us in prayer. This will be immediately followed by the National Anthem and the presentation of the colors by the Kiowa Black Leggings Warrior Society, Kiowa Women's Warriors, and the Kiowa Comanche and Apache, or KCA Veterans Organization. Chairman Weatherax. Okay. Nistoanakok, uh, Nitan. Uh, my name is Marvin Weatherwax, Jr. Uh, I am a member of the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council. I'm also the chairman of the Coalition of Large Tribes and a uh, sitting member of the Montana State Legislature in House District 15. Uh, uh, I am a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Right. <coughs> I a buck sape swats. Hook a he makes give me so cats him. Hook a he need a cax a mac one. Oh, get that's got some money to wants to spunk it on a stop or crystal cookie to money stats come out sape yoke nut. I on up in our toes, hog is the pat pip. I no spobo a canata pigs. Gutches out the chis, gutches out the skin a cookie to money stats. Me some pat the piece and come out done. I will not be not those who get the bad people of Noxomo. The bit of Punakaki, Kosek, Nissa Kosek, Nista Pimix. I will not be not those who get the bad people of Noxomo. Nina, Pita Sapo, Hopitam, Okosek, Nissa Kosek, Nista Pimix. I will not be not those Noxomo, Nina, Ine Okan, Okosek, Nissa Kosek, Nista Pimix. I will not be not those who get the bad people of Noxomos Bunnas. Stomach sepoxex, it's canats, yoki mix, canatsumi tax. I will not be not those Noxomo abscabi begun again, up dots begun in six ago. Ah, canet up. I can have a dots, man, support is the bio at Sinapios and Nisto Atsaman, if to what come out down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please stay right, stay standing for our, our national anthem. Drum. Ladies and gentlemen, the posting of the colors, something that we do all across Indian country every weekend of every month. In our society, ladies and gentlemen, Veterans Day it's not just once a day, once a year. It's every day in our homes, in our prayers. The song that is being sung today, it represents and is being told by the Southern nations of the Kiowa, the Comanche and the Apache. The title of this song is called Ultimate Warrior. These warriors went off. They fought in their darkest times, in their darkest hours and they made it home, and they earned the title, The Ultimate Warriors.
Ladies and gentlemen, our staff that comes in, our staff from our tribes, this represents more and longer history than any of these banners that you see before you. Before we had flags, we had our staffs. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Please remain standing. Our nations representing 576 different distinct individual federally recognized tribes. Our tribal flags to us and to all represent the same as these national colors. Today, the song of the Comanche Nation will be sung, the Comanche flag song.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. This next, this next song, in our, in our nations, we celebrate even those that have made the journey home. We pay honor to all of them that stood before us to make this happen. Where we go tomorrow can only be told by where we come from, from yesterday. Our memorial song for our veterans and their warriors who very went home. Ladies and gentlemen, Native Americans have fought in every battle, every war of this nation, even before it was a nation. This last one to take us out is our victory song for all of our warriors. Representing here before you are the Kiowa, the Comanche, and the Apache tribes of Oklahoma. If you feel like dancing, go ahead, ladies and gentlemen. This is your song. The reason why we fight, the reason why we hold it so dear, is for our families. And bringing up the rear is our future. Ladies and gentlemen, give these gentlemen and ladies a round of applause if you could. <laughs> Mr. Looking Glass in the Southern Nations. Please help me thank the
Kiowa Black Leggings Warriors, the Kiowa Women Warriors, and the Ceremony Drum Group for their participation. Thank you very, very much. Please sit down. Secretary McDonough, General Gaydon, Mr. Pinkham, Senate colleagues, honored guests, and very importantly, Mr. Don Loudner and the NAIV team, thank you all for being here for this long-awaited charter signing ceremony. The NAIV was originally established as a result of a request by Senators Akaka, Inouye, and Nighthorse Campbell during a Senate Veterans Affairs Committee hearing back in 2004. At that time, no Native American veterans organization had ever received a congressional charter. I'm proud to say that 20 years later, your hard work has paid off and the charter is now a reality. Since 2004, the NAIV has been representing the interests and needs of tribal veterans. The NAIV works closely with tribal veteran service officers to make certain Native American veterans receive proper benefits and resources. It provides a voice to Native American veterans who really do have unique needs. Native Americans serve in our nation's military at five times the national average. They have served with distinction in every U.S. conflict over the last 200 years, including the Revolutionary War. According to VA statistics, there are over 140,000 Native American veterans across the nation. Discussions with tribal leaders indicate that this number is most likely an undercount, and the true number may very well approach 200,000. Now that the national American Indian Veterans Congressional Charter has finally been signed into law. Hundreds of thousands of Native American veterans across the country are officially represented by an organization who can more fully meet their needs. Of course, legislation does not pass by itself. There are many people who have helped us move this through the legislative process. Thank you to all of our Native American veterans, not only for your service, but for being tireless advocates for this charter. Thank you to my seatmate, uh, Senator John Thune, for his continued support. And thank you to my colleague, Senator Ben Ray Lujan of New Mexico, who has been our Democrat lead on the NAIV charter bill for the last three years. Thank you for your continued help on this. Thank you to all of our colleagues who have co-sponsored this legislation in the past and helped with last year's amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, which is how we got this cat skinned. Together, our teams and the NAIV regional commanders engage tribes all over our country to gain support for this charter. This was truly a national effort. And finally, I want to give a big thank you to Don Loudner. Many of you know Don, but those of you who don't, Don is a Korean War era veteran, a member of the Hunkpati Sioux Tribe located in South Dakota, and national commander of the National American Indian Veterans. Don was in the National Guard with my dad during the Korean War, where they served together in Alaska in the 196th Regimental Combat Team. My dad introduced me to Donnie and told me he had been trying to get a national organization together to represent the Native American veterans across our country. Not only did he bring the issue to our attention, he has done the real work of advocating for his fellow Native Americans and working with us to get this across the finish line. He never gave up on this organization and he never gave up on his fellow veterans. We would not be here today Without, with this celebration if it was not for him. Again, thank you to all of you for being here today. Now, I would like to, invent, to invite my friend and colleague, Senator Ben Ray Lujan, to provide his remarks. Senator Lujan 
is the Democrat lead of the National American Indian Veterans Charter Act and is a champion for Indian country. Senator Lujan. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor to see so many friends here, um, heroes across America who have continued their advocacy to make a difference in the lives of others. As you know, Don, the challenges that you have gone through and I'm certain still face today when you're working with brothers and sisters to ensure that their service is respected, that access to benefits that they earned is real. It takes help. And that's why I appreciate friends like Senator Mike Grounds, who understood the challenges that existed from the time that three colleagues saw the importance of getting this done through your wisdom and advocacy, and many in this room. But like some policies in Congress, it did not move. And generally, that means that it won't move another step. Leaders like Mike Rounds, seeing the importance of getting this policy done through the wisdom of constituents that he represents that guide him and teach him every day. This is how good policy comes together. To be here with Senator Thune, one of the leaders in the United States Senate, Secretary McDonough, General. It's one of those moments, Mike, where how proud I am to be a United States Senator and represent people across New Mexico and across America. The work that I've been proud to do for my brothers and sisters from sovereign nations all across America. This is one of those proud moments. Because it's one of those moments where Congress can come together to recognize that there's power in numbers, that there's support needed when we're taking steps together, especially when our brothers and sisters find themselves in some of the most vulnerable times. It can happen to a lot of us when we're trying to find help, support, how to navigate the complexities of bureaucracy and documents. We're getting one word wrong means you're turned away at the door. That's what you've achieved today. And to be able to be here with each and every one of you to continue to learn and be reminded of my responsibilities. You know, Mike, I'm, I'm looking around the room now, and I'm just, I'm reminded that when we reference World War II, they would not have been won without the code talkers. But when the responsibility comes to make sure that we're honoring those heroes and their families, it's not always front and center. Today's not that day. Mike, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this, to take all that I've learned from the sovereign nations I'm proud to represent in New Mexico and across America. The Pueblo and tribal leaders who our neighbors, many of them, Mike, I'll close with this, that they're, they're now the respective governors or members of the council of their pueblos. We grew up getting in trouble with each other because <laughs> we would often play youth sports together or run together, but then we'd get together sometimes when we were not in sporting events and, well, kids would be kids. But it's through that connection and that advocacy as well that so many leaders that I've learned from, that I grew up with as well, that have helped me 
best understand my responsibility to defending and protecting sovereignty. And as we are today, showing the respect that our Native American veterans all across America have deserved and that needs to be on full display every day. Thank you for having me, Mike. I'll turn this back over to you, Senator Rounds. Everyone, thank you for having me today. It's an absolute honor to be here with each and every one of you. Congratulations. What Ben Ray is saying is that we can get a lot of stuff done here, and we do it across the aisle, and we do it. And when it comes to our veterans and to our armed services, when we shut the door and we go into a classified section, you can't tell the difference between the Republicans and the Democrats in the room. And that is good for our country. 20 years ago, Tom Daschle, another South Dakota senator, introduced the first bill to grant NAIV a congressional charter. That's how long we've been working on this effort to recognize our Native American veterans. It is appropriate that Senator Daschle's chief of staff at that time is with us today. But this time he's serving our country in a different role. You see, ladies and gentlemen, he has now become, and it is my honor to welcome, the 11th Secretary of the Veterans Administration, the Honorable Secretary Dennis McDonough. Okay. I bet you thought I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you so much. Senator Rounds, thanks so much. And Senator Thune, uh, Senator Lujan, thank you so much for the opportunity to join uh, this great celebration. It's an honor to be here. Just want to make sure that I shout out uh, the Kiowa Honor Guard uh, and those heroic veterans. Uh, and the heroic veterans throughout the room from across the country, as each of our speakers have said. And let me just say to the ultimate vet, uh, warriors, uh, thank you for honoring us uh, with such beautiful uh, prayers and music and tradition. You know, a lot of, we've heard a lot about the uh, accomplishment of today, and I think it's really important, and we owe a date great debt of gratitude to the senators for making this happen, uh, and to our veterans, including Don Loudner, for seeing this possibility. Uh, at VA, we now see also the path forward to a great relationship with NAIV, including in the establishment of more tribal veteran service organizations and tribal veteran service officers. And why is that? We know that vets represented by accredited VSOs file more initial claims, more claims for increase. We know that they have higher grant rates for those claims, for both initial claims and for claims increases. They have higher issue grant rates. They also file more pension claims, therefore caring for their survivors. And they hi have higher award rates for those pension claims. We also know that VSOs help connect veterans to VA. You heard the numbers from Senator Rounds. We dramatically undercount the Native American veterans in the country. And we at VA dramatically underserve you. We have to fix that. VSO members are more than twice as likely to use VA healthcare than VSO non-members. The majority of vets who die by suicide have no connection with a VSO or with VA. And VSOs and the NAIV as the flagship operation will ensure that we connect vets to other vets, to their brothers and sisters in arms. And we know that vets who feel connected to other vets, to their tribe, to their friends, to their family, to their colleagues and their communities experience numerous health benefits. One need only look at our 94-year-old uh, godfather of this great organization to be reminded of that. 
substantially better mental health outcomes, substantially less complications from PTSD, reduced moral injury, guilt, shame, inability to grieve, and increased help-seeking intentions. All of these things not only strengthen our individual veterans, but continue to strengthen the country and our tribes. So we are thrilled to be a part of this operation, this uh, celebration today. And I know, knowing these three senators quite well, that they will hold us now to the fulfilling the promise of this great organization. So, uh, Senator, thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you. Congratulations. And maybe ease up on us a little bit, okay? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay, we don't like real long ceremonies, but it's now time to actually do a formal presentation. I'd like to welcome the NAIV National Commander Don Loudner to the front of the room. Don has worked for many years to secure this charter for the National American Indian Veterans. He has worked at Continuous. My staff all knows Don because he continues to call and wants to know what's next in this process. He's not going to give up. And we've assured him that this, that this is going to become a reality. And the team that he's brought with him, we just really appreciate all of you for being here as well. Let's make a presentation. Bring that up here. Don, I'm Donna, on behalf of all of us here, we are proud to make a presentation to you on behalf of the national, um, on behalf of all of these veterans here, to you as the chairman of the NAIV, we'd like to present you with the uh, actual, a, a copy of the actual act itself as signed, and all of the members that actually co-sponsored it as well, and we'd like to present that to you here today, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Donnie, okay, Don, I know you're sitting down here a little bit low, but you just let everybody know what you're thinking here, okay? Okay, I'm sitting here. I really don't deserve anything. I only done it for the people that elected me. I made a promise, and now I continue to do this as much as I can because we got more that we need to bring out. Uh, but I'm going to stick with it until we get these done. Thank you, Senator Rowland. Thank you, thank you, Donnie. I'll tell you what, I would say that that's pretty good advice for any elected official, right? Stick with it until we get the job done. Now, I think we've also got an honoring here, don't we? Right, uh, okay. Frank Ramirez is director. Okay, national. let's roll it. Uh, Frank Ramirez, I'm national director for NAIV and uh, Commander Loudner is my five-star general. I'm his company clerk. So whenever, I feel like I was called by the Selective Service. He enlisted me about 20 years ago to join him on this, he called it a trail of tears. It was, I remember the day he called me, he said, Frank, I want you to help me get this charter in place. And I remember he told me, he said, Frank, it's going to be rock and it's going to be gravel and it's going to be a hard road to travel but we never say quit, and he never said quit. So it is rock and gravel, and we had a lot of hard roads to travel. But I have to tell you a little bit about Don. Don Lauder is an amazing chief. Or he is a chief four times over. Uh, when he en enlisted me, uh, he's a strategist like nobody else, uh, kind of like uh, Sitting Bull and Jumping Bull and Crazy Horse, uh, even Mahatma Gandhi. And he's also a tactician. So he said, we're going to get to the end on this thing. It may take a while, 
But in the process, as we take this travel, this trip, we're going to run into issues that we need to address. And I said, Commander, you're, you're a commander of a small group. How are we going to deal with these things? Long story short, we did get to the trail where we got now the charter. In the process, though, we ended up getting 5 million masks, KF-94 masks, from South Korea, the VA, and Ireland. And the military, we used the military to distribute these flags, I mean, these masks, from the Arctic, and I went up to the Arctic with him, San Diego, Sacramento, all the way across New York City and all points in between. The, the, the masks were delivered. Number two, we also then, he said, we need to recognize people that come and help us. So he put together a uh, National Commander's uh, Medal of Honor. And it's, uh, I, you all deserve one, but I only have one. And so it's an amazing medal. It's not plastic. It's made in America, and our national commander put that together. Uh, also, he, uh, he said, we need to do things to deliver telehealth, telemedicine, telework for tribes. So as a good sergeant, he had me get on the FCC Broadband Deployment Committee. And in that process, with Don's uh, pushing, we got the 2.5, which is not 5.0, but it's the beginning, 2.5 broadband to every tribe in America, every tribe. Uh, I was on that committee. I tried to get the 5.0, but when you're one vote among, I won't say the name of the big corporations, but <laughs> we, we, we didn't get there. Uh, and then also, uh, this is very important. In June 2nd, 1924, Congress passed the uh, Indian Citizen Act that for the first time Indians were allowed to vote. And it's, a, it's appropriate, it's 100 years since that happened. And the commander was called to do a presentation in Sacramento. So we're gonna do a big event in Sacramento uh, to honor the voting rights for all American Indians nationwide. And the tribes from California I was hoping Don wasn't going to be here because I was going to keep the blanket, but I'm going to call his daughter, Donita, come up. This is a, a peace blanket from all hundred and some tribes of California, and I was told to present this to Commander Don Loudner. I was hoping he wasn't going to be here because I wanted to take it home with me, but <laughs> com Commander, here's from the California tribes, here's your peace and honor blanket. There's a lot more I can say, but I'm going, to, I'm going to end it there. I can talk, and I talked to his family last night for an hour. Don has done a lot more than what I've talked about. And during the lunch, I'd be more than happy to go through it. But I would like to have the commander ask that I present his Medal of Honor to the Secretary of the VA. And if you could come forward, I'm going to have to see if Don... Don can you put it around our secretary's And just in closing, I want to thank really three individuals that have been amazing. Senator Rounds, Senator Lujan, and uh, Paul Moorhead. Are you here, Paul? There he is, Paul Moorhead. Uh, Paul has been working with us for about 20 years, and he's, he's charged us, well, we're going we're gonna to triple your, your, your pay. <laughs> and then I also want to really, a special thanks for Congressman and Senator Ben Ray Lujan. You and your staff were precious to us in this long trip. We would go to your office, and your staff always treated us. We got into special meetings. Uh, astronaut uh, Hernandez was in your office. He joined us, and he got us into other meetings. And Congressman, Senator Lujan, thank you and your staff for all the work you did. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, what a, oh and, and I, I, yeah, I forgot. I need to call the, uh, uh, the Korean uh, War Group to present a blanket. They want you to present. The, I would the, be honored. Come forward. 
I almost forgot. I would have been killed. <laughs> Look, I, I just want to say thank you to everybody that is here. A very appropriate way to end this ceremony with an honoring song. Thank you to everyone for attending, especially Secretary McDonough, General Gaydon, Mr. Pinkham, 
uh, Senate colleagues, tribes, and most importantly, Don Loudner and the NAIV team. Also, I just wanted to announce that the Eastern Band of the Cherokee has invited attendees to a reception at their DC row house after the ceremony concludes. I uh, thank you all very much for attending today. Thank you. We have our new senator to the yes. right. Thank you. That, that concludes it? That's it. Yep. Thank you all again.